Let's turn our Bibles and well, let's start with the book of Luke, chapter 19. Luke, Lucas, capítulo 19. Book of Luke, chapter 19. Look at verse 1. It says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho without praise God. This reminds me of a scripture in there, Joshua 6 2. And among us, that Jericho was given to Joshua. They told him, Hey, the, the, it's yours. The battle's yours. The victory's yours. And I, I said, It's written there in John 16 30, and John 16, and up, praise God. 33, and up, praise God. These words that I give you to bring you to bring you peace in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And, among, and we thank the Lord when we say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And thank God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that He has given us the victory in all things. And up, praise God. And verse 2 says, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus means cleanse. And I always remember John 15, 3, we are cleansed through His word. But I, Ephesians 5, 25 and 26, the memo mismo. Uh, they said, There was a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus means cleansed. Which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. So he was rich. He was chief. He was... And among those in your land, his statue was little, but I praise God. But as a person in Moza, as they, uh, he had a pretty good position. He was rich. But if you're rich, no matter how rich you are, if you don't have Jesus, it doesn't bound to anything. Because as it's written in John 15, 5, without him, we can do nothing. But then as it's written there in Galatians chapter 6, he that thinketh he saw, or Galatians chapter 8, I mean 1 Corinthians chapter 8. He that thinketh he's somebody when he's nobody. And among those, you know, he deceived himself. You know? But, vice versa, if you think you're nobody, you're everything in the Lord Jesus because Jesus died for you on the cross. You know? Praise God. And verse 3, he said, And he sought to see Jesus. What did he see? What did he saw? What did he want to see? He wanted to see Jesus. If you're willing and, 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 and among those, you know, and obedient, you will eat the good fruit of the land. Which is in Isaiah 115. Si quisieras y oyeras, comerás el bien de la tierra. He wanted to. You have to want to. You have to want to change. You, you have to want Jesus. And while you have to want Him in your heart, you have to want Him abiding in you. Dice el hermano del Señor. And sought. He wanted to see Jesus. But he could not because of the people, the press. Sometimes the hermano del Señor, the people don't allow us to see Jesus. Sometimes the problems don't allow us to see Jesus. That's why we have to go over, among us and the people, over what they say, over what they think, because they're never going to let you see Jesus. Especially if you're listening to traditions of men, you'll never be able to see the glory of the true Jesus, among us and your listen. And he started to see Jesus, who he was, and could not, for the prayer, because he was little in stature. He was about maybe about an inch or two. Smaller than me. <laughs> so he was pretty short. And while he said, and he ran before and climbed up a sycamore tree. And what's so special about the sycamore tree, you know, is that it's a sycamore fig tree, according to the to uh, to the the, the the Smith Bible Dictionary. But I first got it. And it, his leaf was shaped as a heart. And among us, and we think of heart, we think of love. But I first got. And they gave a fruit, a fig tree. And this particular fruit, and among you had to pierce it with something sharp and allow it to drain for three days and a half. And then after three days and a half, you can eat of it. Don't you see Jesus written all over this tree? And among those, don't you see that? And among those, it was more than coincidence that it had to be this tree, that you had to pierce it with, with, uh, with something sharp to let it drain for three days and a half? Didn't they pierce Jesus on the side? And wasn't he in the tomb for three days? And among us, Señor, praise God, right? And after He resurrected, we can all eat of Him, right? Praise God. So, among us, Señor, what I'm trying to say is that God had a purpose for everything. Even this fig tree, but I praise God, or sycamore fig tree. Verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, He looked up. He sees the cave way up there, right? Praise God. And don't think of these sycamore trees that we find here in West Texas, among us, Señor. No, it was a sycamore a sycamore fig tree was really the, the decent. And saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, called him by name. Praise God, because he knows everybody. He knows you, he knows them all. He, the Bible says there in Psalm 147 that uh, he's of great understanding. Praise God. 
His understanding is infinite. He knows everything about it. He called us a star by name, it says there. And uh, Psalm 147. If he can call a star by name, he knows you by name. But I praise God. He says, Hekel. And I praise God. God knew him even before the foundation of the world. and told him, make haste. Hurry up. And said, and come down. For today I must abide. There's that word. Abide. Mune. That's the word, that's the Greek word we're studying today. Mone. Not money, but mone. <laughs> Which means to abide, to dwell, to live inside as a home. Today I must abide at thy house. And each one of us have a house. And that house is your heart. That's what Christ wants to abide. Praise God. Bible says there in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open it the door, I will come in. In him. And sup with him and he with me. Praise God. You got to let him in and abide. And not only abide, but rule. But I'll rule your house. But I'll praise God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8, and I'll go right quick. This is in Matthew chapter 8. It says over here, Matthew chapter 8. Look at verse 18. It says, Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. See, he had a lot of followers. Jesus has a lot of people that listen to him or, or hear but I praise God. But not too many invite him into, into their heart. You see, Jesus is looking for a place to rest. And among those Señor. In verse 19 he says, And a certain scribe came and said unto him, A scribe, supposedly knows the Bible, supposedly knows Scripture. Master, I will follow thee whatsoever thou goest. You know, I will go wherever you go. And Jesus said, Oh yeah, well, the foxes have holes. And Mother Señor, and the birds of the air have nests. And also recall, if you want a deeper study, yeah, Jesus will call here a fox <laughs> for his time. And the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to to lay his head. In other words, goes, you know, yes, a lot of people were following him. Yes, a lot of people wanted miracles and signs and all this. But not too many will give a home for Jesus. Not too many will open up their heart for Jesus. Jesus rests in you. As a matter of fact, you, you, you are God's rest. Did you know that? And vice versa, God is your rest. Because he says there in Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I'll praise God. So the Bible goes, And another disciple said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. He, he had other something, to tell something first. It wasn't wrong to bury his father, by no means. The thing is, when we put something else first before God, that's where we go wrong. He said, but Jesus told them, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. And if you don't have Jesus, the Bible says there in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, that we used to walk in among those and young. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. In other words, without Jesus, we are dead. And it is written there in 1 John 5, 12, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that does not have the Son of, life, the Son of God does not have life. Matter of fact, talking about abiding, and here in John chapter 3, verse 36, and among with the same, you know, with the same intention, with the same, same message, and John chapter 3, verse 36 tells us, and Señor, it tells us, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided in him. So who do you rather have abiding in you? Would you rather have Jesus abiding in you? 
Or would you rather have the wrath of God abiding in you? Hermano del Señor, ¿verdad? Praise God. Okay, go, Señor. Let's go to John 12. We're just going to, we're not going to follow any particular, Hermano del Señor, uh, uh, you know, form of study. We're just going to, you know, find where it says abide, okay, hermano, in, in the scripture. Okay, praise God. Let's go. The next one, we'll go to John 12, Hermano del Señor. John 12. Let's start at verse 42, hermano del Señor. Dice aquí. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue again. Hermano, they wanted rather to please man than God. Hermano, instead of, oh, you know, uh, this religion is wrong. Uh, and well, they don't, they, they'd rather be popular. Because, you know, beware. Because most of the time, the thing that's popular is not really the right thing. Did they, they, did they not vote to crucify the Lord Jesus? It says that they were afraid of the fact they're going to kick me out. If I say this, they're going to kick me out of the church. But it says there in verse 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's, that's something we got to take care of because that is one device of Satan. That is one of Satan's tools is the praise of men. And, and, my, and he's using it big time. And, and when people using Facebook, so, uh, uh, all, that, all the social media where people want praise of men. So that's one thing we've got to watch ourselves with. But I'll praise God. Verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me, the Father. And remember, Jesus and the Father are one. And I am come, he said in verse 46, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me, should not abide in darkness. See, in what goes, God does not want you to abide in darkness. He wants you to abide in the light. I think it's written here in John 1, 8, 831. Well, in John 8, 12 says, Verse 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He is that lamp. Can we say in Psalm 119, verse 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a guide unto my path. He is that light. He is. He will light me in darkness as it is written in Samuel. What else is God? I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In other words, you will abide in the light. Look at verse 31. It says, Praise God, John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed to the Jews which believed on him, says, "If you continue in my word, in other words, if you abide, the Greek word, same word, same Greek word, if you dwell, and my God Señor, abide in my word, then are you my disciples." So, hermano, think of it. He says, "If you know, as a condition." So what happens if you don't abide in his word? Will you still be his disciple? Even though you think, well, I'm saved. But yeah, if you're saved, but you don't wish to abide in his word, are you still considered by Jesus his disciple? He says, if you continue, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciple. What up, praise God. As it's written in there, John chapter 15, verse, 50, verse 7, right? we'll get there in a little bit, what up, praise God. Dice aquí, uh, aleluya, gloria, Señor, vamos a John 12, ahora, praise God. Yeah, let's go to John 15. Vamos, vamos para allá. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 15. In other words, if we abide in Him, si, si permanecemos en Him, it's today's message. If we abide in Him, let's start verse 1. John 15, 1, it's all, John 15, 
Praise God. In John 14, John 14 and John 15, it's all about abiding. John 14 is about God abiding in us. John 15 is about us abiding in Him. Okay, did you guys, did you get that? Okay, my brother, we might go to John 14 a little bit about the man. Maybe later on. This is John 15, this is verse 1. I am the true vine. So who's the true vine? Jesus. And my father is the husbandman. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. And remember, we by the Lord, we have the fruits of the Spirit. That I joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, hope. You know, all those that I can have written there in Galatians 5.22. We're supposed to bear fruit. The Bible says there in Romans 7, 4, that Christ died so that we can bear fruit. And to, to the husband, too. And when we are married to him, that we should bear fruit and bring fruit unto him. And it says there in Romans 7, not like that, but I'm just paraphrasing, paraphrasing it there in Romans 7, 4. But I praise God. He said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he taketh away. If a man, you can, uh, if, you're, if you're a good tree, you're putting bad, bad fruit. <laughs> you're not a good tree, you're not for God. So a good tree gives good fruit. A bad tree gives bad fruit. And you shall know them by their fruits. He said, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. And while that, it may bring forth more fruit. You know, and among us, you know, as a, my dad, a long time ago, he, he, well, he was a tree trimmer and up for his God. And uh, he would always teach me about the fruit tree. That if you wanted to grow bigger, like, for example, the peach tree. Man, uh, yeah, my, my dad would have a, a tree in the back. Go to Senor, and uh, every August, he would have big, big old peaches, man, big ones. And the reason, and the way you would get them it was by pruning the, the smaller ones. Of, they call, he, he would call them suckers. That are just there to, to get all the, all the juice and all the, the minerals and the water that, from, the, from the, the, other, the other branches that are bearing fruit. So he would teach me, hey, you got to get rid of all these little suckers. And then he would, and the next thing is, you want to get, get rid of some of the little, the, little pe the little peaches, kick them out. And one of the big old fruit will come out of all those He would always tell me too that the branch is rubbing on another branch. And one of the, they will kill each other. Praise God. There's many Christians that are rubbing against each other. Praise God. You need to prune, prune each other. But that's another message for a different time. You know? Praise God. Praise in verse 3. Now you are clean. Huh? So who prunes you? The Lord. And how are we clean? It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken with you. Why? Because I can tell you this is wrong. The religion can tell you this is right and wrong. But the only one that has authority and the only one that would be right will be God. If this says you're right, you're right. And if this says you're wrong, guess what? You're wrong. No matter what I say, it's the word that cleanses you. Not man. Verse 4, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, the reason you don't bear fruit, we need Jesus to work in us. As it is written there in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it is Him that works in us, that abides in us, in other words, to do His will and His good pleasure. He's the one that helps us bring that fruit. And among us, Senor. And abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except they abide in the vine. No more can you, except, except ye abide in me. Telling you how to bear fruit. How do you bear fruit? You've got to abide in Him. And the water source. Praise God. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. You all got to remember that. We're just the branches. He is the vine. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Remember that scripture. Without him, we can do nothing. And we are nothing without him. He is the one that does everything. 
Praise God. You are here because of Him. He, he let you wake up this morning. Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gathered them and cast them into the fire. And among us, if you have a, praise God, if you can see a forward among us, and you're in, in a, it, it's really talking about the lake of fire. And they are burned. Verse 7. If you abide in me, if, yeah, look at that big word. There's big words in the Bible. The biggest words in the Bible are but, if, and, those are big, big words. Because they change everything. It says, if, a lot of people don't want to read that if. They go, no, no, it says right there, we can ask anything of the Father. No, it says, if, it has a condition. If you abide in me, that's today's message. If you abide in him. In my words, abide in you. You gotta abide in him, and his words gotta abide in you. It's got a condition. He said, You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It's got to love, love, love. No, the Bible says we can ask anything you want. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, and I'm like, you're not gonna you're not gonna go against his will. You're not gonna ask and among us of something that's not against God's will. In other words, if you ask God for a bread, and well, He's going to give it to you. But if you ask for a stone, and well, He's not going to give you a stone, a stone being brought. And among us, and you're like, you, like you are being a dad, and your son asks you for a, for a bread, you're not going to give him a stone. And among us, and you know, if He asks you for a dad, you're not going to give him a, a scorpion. And among us, and you're a snake. Well, you're going to give him something good, even our Father. Amen. The same way. If you ask for something good, He'll give it to you. And when you abide in God's Word, and among His desires become your desires, and your desires become His desires. And that's why it is written there in Psalms 37 verse 4, Delight in Thy Word, and He will give you the petitions of your heart. And among the Lord's name. Verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. And what makes God happy? When you start bearing good fruit, a lot of it to the upper is God. As the Father has loved me, I have loved you. Continue in my love. Abide in my love. How do we abide in His love? Well, let's keep on reading. How, the question is, how do we abide in His love? If you keep my word, my commandments, you will abide, you will abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. So how do we abide in His love? By abiding in His word. Well, well what is it saying? Well, isn't it written there First John 4, 8? God is love. Isn't Jesus God? And isn't the word God? Isn't Jesus the word? So if, if, if Jesus is love or God is love? So if we abide in the word, it's the same as abiding in Jesus. And it's the same as abiding in His love because God is Jesus and God is love. And the Word is Jesus. So how do you abide in His love? By abiding in His Word. Praise God. That's why it says there in uh, 1 John 5, 3, you know? Praise God, if we... Uh, uh, still, if you want that love, if you want continuous love, it, it, the commandments are not grievous. But I'm praise God. This is right. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you abide in my love. Verse, verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my love, my joy, might remain in you, and that your joy might be fulfilled. Not only his love, if you abide in his word, guess what? His joy will abide in you. You might have joy, but your joy will never be fulfilled until you find Jesus. And Jesus is that man that fulfills your joy. Jesus' word is that joy. The Bible says here in Jeremiah 15, 16, and I found your word and the result was rejoicing forevermore. He said, I found your word and I ate it. And the result was 
Rejoice forevermore because I am called by your name. Dice ahí, hermano, Señor, dice. In verse 12. So, these things have I spoken unto you. In other words, his word. That my joy may remain in you and that your joy might be fulfilled. The thing that I want you to see there is that his word brings that fulfillment of joy. Verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 13, greater love has no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. There's no other greater love than Jesus. Jesus is that love. Hermano goes in. There's no other greater love than Jesus. Verse 15, hermano, because, you know, we may, lay, we may lay our lives for our friends, but how many will lay their lives for a murderer? For a thief, and for an adulterer, a fornicator, how many? Jesus laid his life for all. Praise God. Did you see that? Did you get that? But I'm praise God. These are in verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all the things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Wow. And my God said, it's written there in Mark 13, 31. Behold, I have foretold you all things. He's our friend. And he tells us all things. And we should tell everything to him. Because he's the closest relative we got. Verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go bring forth fruit. That fruit should remain That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And I praise God. Good Señor. Is that we're going to read till there? Uh, that's what we're going to read. Okay? Praise God. Now, hermano, go, Señor, uh, we'll go to, you know, let's go to 1 John. Primera John, hermano. 1 John, chapter 5. I mean, chapter 2. 1 John 2. Primera Juan. Let's start verse 20. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. 20, 20 verse 2, 20. He said, But you have an unction. That's the Holy Spirit that abides in you. He said, From the Holy One. And you know all things. Like why? Because God, He told us, Hey, I'm going to show you all things. The Bible says in, in uh, what? Uh, John 14, 26. And the Comforter that I will send for my Father, He will teach you all things and bring everything that I have spoken into your remembrance. No? His Word. That's what He called the Comforter because He uses His Word. God's Word. That's what brings comfort. Verse 21. I have not written unto you, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. He's talking about abiding in the truth. Verse 22. Who is the liar? And well, who is the liar? We know in John 8, 44, that God identifies the liar. That is Satan, Lucifer, the Antichrist. But he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. And how is he going to deny that he's the Christ? That Jesus is the Christ? By saying he's Jesus. You know, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to say he's Jesus. That's why it says Antichrist in place of Christ. He's going to call himself Christ. In so doing, if I'm saying, I'm Adam, I'm denying that he's Adam. I'm saying I am Adam. I'm Adam. But I'm really able. But I'm God. Mm. So Satan will deny that Jesus is, is God by saying that he's Jesus. Okay? He is the Antichrist that deny the Father and the Son. Okay? Praise God. Hey, uh, Uh, I'm sorry, but we got to read this, the verse by verse. And all of us here, but I first got verse 23. Whosoever denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. So not only do you have Jesus abiding in you, you have the Father. 
And verse 14. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. Heard. What is this that you hear from the beginning? And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's Jesus, the Word. He said, if that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, that's Jesus, the Word, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So how do you continue in the Son? And how do you continue in the Father? By continuing in His Word. You have to abide in His Word. You have to be in His Word. Every day in His Word is your good day. And I, as Pastor, Pastor Murray would say, I, praise God. Even with problems, because Jesus is the living word. I, praise God. This is in verse 25. And this is the promise that He has promised. Us even eternal life. And if we read there first, uh, Timothy 1 2, he promised us eternal life even before the world began. Because we were with him. He said, This is the promise. What are the promise? Everlasting life to us, not to those that do not have Jesus. Everlasting life will be for those that have Jesus. Verse 26. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Verse 27. But the anointing, that's the Holy Spirit, which you have received of Him, abideth in you. See, if He remains in you, if He abides in you, you know, you, ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, is the truth, and is, there's no lie, and even it has taught you, you shall abide in Him. So, Hermano Goyo Señor, there he tells us, Hermano Goyo Señor, that God teaches us all things. If his word abides in you, if Jesus abides in you, praise God. And if the word abides in you, that means Jesus abides in you. That means the Father abides in you. That means you have the unction. The unction teaches you all things. For we are his friends. And God has told us all things through his word. Okay? Praise God. And verse 28 says, And now little children abide in him, that when you shall, when he shall appear, appear. Doesn't say he's coming uh, invisible. It says appear. See, so it doesn't say invisible. It says appear. When he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, praise God, that we may have works. Not be found naked. And I'm going to study so that you shall not be ashamed. Right divine the word of truth. That's like Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. So abiding in him. If we abide in him. Praise God. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Let's continue among us in your God. Let's start verse 4. Praise God. He said. Whosoever committed sin. Transgress is also the law. For sin is the transgression of law. But I praise God. But remember Romans 7, 14. And all the law is spiritual. Verse 5. And you know that he was manifested. And why did Jesus come to this world? Well, he's one of the reasons why he came to the world. And verse 5. And you know that Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. And him, there is no sin. He did not sin. But even though he became sin for us, yet he without sin, because he remained without sin, as it's written in Hebrews 4, and among us in God, he can save us or secure us when we are tempted of sin. Verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. What does that mean? Oh, we got to be perfect? No. The word sinneth there means continue sinning. You don't get, if you abide in him, you don't continue sinning. And well, for the same unction, the same spirit today. Hey, hey, you need to ask God to forgive you. You can't continue sinning. You got you got out there in the world, you try to be like the world, you can't. You can't continue sinning. Because the seed of God remains in you. Well, let's read, let's continue reading. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth 
had not seen him, neither known him. Now, did he continue sinning? You haven't known the Father. Oh no, what's say don't we say? I can do whatever I want. Hey, you don't know the Father. Verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. Not this man, not any other man. This is he that doeth righteousness is righteous. And of course, what is righteous according to Philippians 3 9? Believing in the Lord. This is even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. You know, if you continue sinning, you know, don't feel bad about it. Just continue sinning. Oh, I'm going to say it. I always say it. I can do whatever I want. And my voice said, yeah. I said, you are of the devil. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. And my, he, remember, he was perfect in all his ways until the iniquity was found in him. Uh, Ezekiel 28, verse 15 through 17, you know. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And whosoever is born of God does not continue sinning. For his seed remaineth in him, remaineth, abideth in him. If we abide in him, the seed, the word, Jesus, is that seed. Isn't that written there in Luke 8, 11? The seed is the word of God. In Galatians 3.16, Jesus is the seed. And I'm listen now. If that seed remains in us, he said, he cannot sin or continue sinning. Because he is born of God. Okay, I'm going to listen to him. That was 1 John chapter 3. And I'm going to listen to him. Let's go to John. Well, Let's go back to John chapter 5. <laughs> Man, John gets pretty heavy among us, you know. <laughs> John chapter 5, especially John chapter 5, it gets real, real heavy among us, you know. But I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to start verse 38, John 5 and 38. Well, verse 37, he said, and the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He said, and, and you, this is chapter 30, he says, and you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has said him, you believe not. You see, among the Pharisees, and all they were so-called religious, and no, they did not know God's word. A lot of people want to use an excuse and say, "Oh, the Pharisees knew the word." That's a lie. And well, Jesus would also always tell the Pharisees, "Have you not read?" And he would tell, "Have you not read?" He would tell them, including the, the Sadducees. He tells them there, Mark twelve. He tells them, "You heard, but not knowing the scriptures." Know the power of God. And among those things, so don't let people lie to you. It's an excuse for them not to read the scripture. Yeah. Praise God. Okay? The scripture is in the Bible. I have 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. From a little child, you have known the Holy Scriptures that are able to make thee wise. 2 Second, Second Timothy 3, 15. That are able to make thee wise unto salvation. First, uh, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2. And you will be saved if you keep in memory that which I have spoken unto you. God's word saves you. Praise God. God's word is Jesus. And well, that's why I'm so against it among people changing God's word. Like in verse 39, where they put, where, where they change God's word completely in the other versions. And verse 39 says, search the scriptures. And among those, and you know, and the others, the other ones, and well, they changed it big time. They, they added, you search the scriptures. No, it, it doesn't say you. The word is not, you can go into Greek, even in their Greek. And it's still not there. So don't be adding you there. It doesn't say you. You search the scriptures because you think you have it. No, it says search the scriptures. Because in them you think you have eternal life. But you don't even read them. So search them. It says, and well, search the scriptures. 
He said, for in them you think you have eternal life. So if you think that you have eternal life, well, read them, search them. That's what he's saying. It doesn't say that in the scriptures they're not eternal life. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. Is there no salvation in the word? Is there no salvation in Jesus? Hermano Señor, of course there is. These are, these are kind of doctrines that they want to put in there so that you don't want to abide, so that you don't abide in His Word. Oh, you don't have to study God's Word. You know, we're just going to disappear. Yeah, you know, you, you, you know who's going to be, who's, who's going to take you? The Satan, among us, you know, the devil. No, I want to be the one taken. Do you, you look up that word taken? What shall be taken? And what shall be left? The word taken there is para lambano. And that is to involve yourself in, a, in an affair. And if you're supposed to be a virgin, you're not supposed to be having an affair with Satan. The word taken, again, there in Matthew 24, Mark 13, look it up. And don't believe me, and para lambano is the Greek word. Praise God. To involve yourself in an intimate relationship. Amen. Not with Jesus, with Satan in Mongo Señor. El Gloria Señor dice. Praise God. John 5, 39. What for 30, verse 40? And you will not come to me that you might have life. Praise God. You don't want to come to me. Praise God. You don't want to believe me. You rather believe other men. And if you keep on reading and telling amen, some other person comes in somebody else's name, and then you receive them. But if I come preaching God's word, you don't receive me. Praise God. God Señor. Abide in His word. God Señor. Okay? Let's go back. Let's go to... Let's read from John 6, 56. You want to go to John 6, 56? Well... I don't want to get too much in my to John chapter 6, but I've got to explain a lot of stuff. And my mother said, but mother, we did barely finish John 6. When John 7 on Thursday, that I praise God. So, okay, let's go to the book of John chapter 9. Let's read from verse 1. Remember there in John 6, and my mother said, you know, that where it says, I will write, raise you again, the word raise is to stand up. Yeah. And the last day, the last day is the last day. It's not the, not the rapture. It's the last day, the millennium. A judgment day. He's going to make sure you're standing. Okay? And it doesn't talk about people coming out of the Not there. It's not coming out. Okay? It's not talking about people coming out of the graves there. In John 6. Okay, my Lord, you know, if you don't believe me, I've got, got a video on that. Hermano del Señor is called uh, uh, praise God, the day of the day of resurrection or the day of deception. That's what that video is called. You want to look into that. But I'll praise God. Okay, let's go back to John chapter 9. Not John 9, Hermano del Señor. Okay, praise God. John 9. Let's start verse 46, verse 34. They answered and said unto him, Though was to altogether born and sent, and those though teach us, and they cast him out. They, he was taking the blind man. Remember the blind man? He was made whole. And uh, they, who? Tell us who's the one that made you to see. Mm -hmm. And Jesus. And I praise God. And he started preaching to them. Remember, praise God. Bless him, you know. And uh, verse 36 says, And, and uh, these are the Pharisees. And uh, verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, to the blind man, does thou believe on the Son of God? Verse 36 says, Jesus that, and he answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? In other words, guide me to him. And Jesus tells him, thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talks with you. Praise God. And he said, Lord, I believe and worshiped him. Verse 39 said, For judgment I come into this world, and that they perceive not my seed, and they that perceive might be made blind. 
And remember, these Pharisees supposedly saw, but they were blinded in the back. And this man that was blind could see even more than they. He was preaching to them, and they kicked him out. Remember? I don't want to read all this chapter. We'll get there. We'll, go say, no, no, no. we'll get there pretty soon, hopefully. Verse 41, he said, Jesus said unto them, verse 40, and some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? <laughs> they, they, they knew Jesus was talking about them. Verse 41 said, Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. It's bad when you know you're wrong. When you say, I can see. Well, if you can see, you know you're wrong. If you can see, you know you're wrong. So sin remaineth in you until we confess our sins. And he is right to and will forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is talking about abiding in Him, the Mongol is If we abide in Him. Man, praise God. I got John 14 for the next scripture, the Mongol. We won't, we won't have enough time to cover John 14, the Mongol is oh, Maybe next time, but uh, praise God. So, the Mongol, let's take some other scriptures here. Praise God. Vamos para. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2 again. I'm going to listen to the Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, let's start verse 1. He said, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. See, you don't want you to sin. See, I write you this thing that you don't sin, but I know you're going to sin. But look, if you sin, don't worry about it. You know why? Because he said, and if any man sin, we have a lawyer, an advocate, with a father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's the best lawyer there is. He'll fight for you. And I'm going to listen to him. And it's right, and, it, and it, he is the propitiation for our sins. And not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Everybody. A lot, of, a lot of people say, no, it's the sins for the God's electromass. No, it says for the whole world, right? Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the whole world. Verse 3. And hereby do we know that we know Him. And we keep His commandments. He said, and we what? How do we know Jesus? By keeping His word. Because Jesus is the word, verse 4. He that says, I know him, and keep it not his commandment, his words, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. If you don't have the truth, it means you don't have the word. If you don't continue in the word, you don't continue in the truth. Verse 5. But whoever keepeth his word, in him barely is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Remember the love of God? Abiding in his love is abiding in his word. We're saying, he that said he abided in him ought to himself. He said, he that said he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So we got to walk even as he walked. If we abide in him, we got to walk the walk and talk. I mean, not only talk to talk, but walk to walk. Come on, praise God. But uh, okay, my brothers and y'all. Let's go to John again, John chapter 3. First John 3, my brothers and let's go to first John chapter 3. Well, we have things there in first John, let's keep on reading in first John. Sorry, sorry, my brothers and y'all. So verse 7, brethren. I write no new commandment unto you, but no commandment which you have from the beginning. Remember, what was in the beginning? God's word. The old commandment, the word which you have heard from the beginning, 
Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith is in the light and hated his brother is darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. So if you, if he said, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Remember, love is a fulfilling of God's commandment. Verse 11. But he that hated his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. Amen. Verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Verse 13. Your sins are forgiven. Verse 13. I write unto you, Father, because you have these are fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And who is that? A Satan. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abideth in you. So how are we strong? By letting God's word abide in us. And you have overcome the wicked one. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have overcome him because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The word is what makes us overcome him. Praise God. Having Jesus in our heart and our blessing him. Praise God. Let's finish. We're going to go ahead and finish my blessing him. Let's go ahead and finish with 1 John chapter 3. Again, I'm going to go start verse what? Start verse 14. He said, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Death is another name of Satan. If you don't abide in God, guess who you abide in? Come on, listen now. Verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That's what God said. That's why God said a lot of people, uh, they, they let a lot of progressive movement uh, move into their life or move into to, uh, politics and stuff. And my brothers and you know, they say, oh no, uh, I don't believe in capital punishment. Well, God says capital punishment. You know why? Because, does that mean the murderer cannot, the murderer cannot have eternal life in him? Does that mean he can't be forgiven? No, I never said that. Read it carefully. It says a murderer cannot have eternal life abiding in him. That's why God says capital punishment because when you kill him, he goes back to God. Who, who gave us hope, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, but out verse 7, he goes to God, and God will judge them, and not only there, but uh, the soul and the spirit of the person he killed will be there. And my Lord Senor, and God will talk to both of them. God said, tell them, hey, that's the person you killed. Praise God. And that's why it's very important for a murderer to look for God here in this earth. Praise God, because yes, God will forgive them. But we got to go meet our Father. That's why God says capital punishment. Praise God, okay? So, so in my words, and that's why God says capital punishment, because it's God that judges them. Well, how about Cain? God let him live. Well, who judged him? Was he judged by man? Or was he judged by God? Who's the one that let Cain go? It was God. So God judged him already, okay? Praise God. Okay, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Praise God. He said, Because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Remember, ya no vivimos nosotros. We don't live. God lives in us. He abides in us. Remember, Galatians 2, 2 20. Verse 16. Hereby perceive we that love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Verse 17. But whosoever hath this, he said, but whoso hath this world's good, and see this brother 
have need and shut up his bowels of compassion from him. How put it, the love of God in him? In other words, and my God said, you know, if you say you're a Christian you, and you have love, and my God said, you know, and you don't give what your brother needs, if you have it, give it to him. And my, at least if you don't have it, my, at least let him know where to get it from God. You know, praise God or, or somebody else. Praise God, but at least try to help as much as you can. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in world and word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You know? Don't be just a talker. Be a doer. Don't just be a hearer. Do a doer. Be a doer. And verse 19. And hereby we know that we are the, are the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us not, greater is he than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if your heart condemns you not, then have we confidence toward God. And when we ask God, forgive us, Father. Praise God. We have that confidence with Him. He wants us to have that boldness with Him as a, father, as a son and a father. A boldness where you can go talk to Him and not be afraid. Even if you've done something wrong, He's there to forgive. Verse 22, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. Because we keep His commandments. Because why? Because, there's that other big word, because we keep His commandments. And do the things which are pleasing in His sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ. What's the commandment? That we believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And love one another. And as He gave us commandment, verse 24. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him. And He in Him. And hereby we know that we abide in, that He abides in us by the Spirit that He has given us. So now, praise God. Let's stand up and Father, we give you glory and honor for your word.